as described on its webpage, GTK, or the GIMP Toolkit, is a multi-platform toolkit for creating user interfaces. In this video, we'll use the Haskell GI suite of packages to build a simple GTK application with Haskell. <laughs> We begin with an empty Cabal project called GTK Intro. To write our GTK application, we're going to use the Haskell GI suite of packages. For this simple application, we'll only need GI GTK and Haskell GI Base. By default, the overloading feature of Haskell GI is enabled, leveraging the overloaded labels language extension of GHC. Overloading is used to refer to methods, properties, and signals of G object types, such as GTK widgets. The downsides of overloading are longer compilation times and incompatibility with GHC 8.2. If you want to use GHC 8.2, add Haskell GI overloading with version 0.0, .0 as a dependency in your Cabal file and use the non-overloaded functions. We'll see examples of using the GTK bindings, both with and without overloading, shortly. In main HS, we begin by importing data.gi.base, which provides the generic functions for working with the G object types, and imports GI GTK, qualified as GTK, which includes widgets and functions specific to GTK. Next, we redefine the main action to be a do block, initializing GTK with the init function and nothing as a parameter, and starting the main loop using gtk.main. We create a window using the new function, the window constructor, and a list of properties, setting the title to introduction. When the window is destroyed, we quit the main loop so that the application exits when the window is closed by the user. Finally, we use the showAll function to make the window and all its children visible. Currently, we don't have any child widgets in the window, but we'll add a few soon. To use overloaded labels and strings, we need to enable some language extensions at the top of the file. Okay, let's run this program. With GHCI open, we type colon main to run the main action. We see a small window with no contents. The Haskell GI packages support overloaded labels. Already, we've used overloading for three different GTK concepts. Setting the title, a property of the window object. Attaching a handler to destroy, a signal available on all widget objects. Calling show all, a function available on all widget objects. We could rewrite our code to not use overloading. This involves using prefixed versions of new, like window new, that now requires a window type parameter. Using widget specific versions of signal functions, like on widget destroy, to connect a signal to a callback and using prefixed functions for widgets, like widget show all. As I mentioned in the introduction, overloading is not supported together with GHC 8.2, so you might not be able to use it, depending on your requirements. Before we add some widgets to our window, we'll make it bigger. The resize function takes as arguments a window, a width, and a height, and resizes the window. Now, Let's add a label to our window. The label property is used to specify the text of the label. We add the label, here bound to message, to our window. Reloading the module in GHCI and again running the application, we see a small window with the hello greeting. To make the application interactive, we want to add a button. 
In a real application, clicking the button could launch the missiles. But in this example, we will only change the text of a label. We begin by adding a box to the window, in which we'll place our button and our message label. The orientation will be orientation vertical, meaning that the widgets are laid out top to bottom, rather than left to right. Next, we add our message label to the box, instead of adding it to the window. Finally, we create a button with the label Click Me. Add the button to our box and attach a signal handler for the clicked signal that changes the message label. We can now reload GHCI and see our application featuring a label and a button. If we click the button, the label text changes. Before we wrap up, we should make the application look nicer. By using the overloaded add function, a function available on container widgets, our widgets are laid out next to each other without any spacing. Instead, we'll use pack start, a function available on box, with which we can control how the child is laid out in the box container. The function takes as arguments the box container, the child to add to the box, a bool named expand, determining if the child should be given extra space allocated to the box, a bool named fill, determining if the child should use and grow to fill its allocated space, rather than being surrounded by padded empty space and a word 32 named spacing, specifying the number of pixels of empty space to surround the child widget with. We replace add with pack start when adding both the message label and the button. The message label will expand in the box, while the button will not expand. Both will have 10 pixels of extra spacing. We reload and run the application and see that it now looks much nicer. Boxes and the pack start and pack end functions are useful for controlling the layout of your user interface. You can also use a limited version of CSS with GTK, but that's for another episode. The Haskell GI family of packages, and specifically the GI GTK package, lets us program graphical user interfaces with GTK and Haskell. While these are generated and very complete bindings, the API is imperative and object-oriented. To overcome this mismatch, I've been working on a declarative layer on top of GI GTK to let us program with GTK and Haskell in a pure functional style. In a future episode, I hope to cover the GI GTK declarative package and show you how to build a small application with it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please consider supporting my work at patreon.com slash Haskell at work. Thanks.